good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. And how to resist the temptation of sugar and alcohol and enjoy them in healthy moderation. That's what we're going to talk about now with our guest in the studio, psychiatrist Dr. Peter Neu. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. Dr. Neu, some have to have their glass of wine in the evening. Others can't do without their pick-me-up chocolate in the afternoon. What's healthy enjoyment and what's dependence or addiction there? Well, if we talk about dependence, we have to consider that this is a disease. If we talk about a disease, we need special symptoms. So in case of um, dependence, we need, for example, neglection or missing of social or familiar function, symptoms like withdrawal symptoms, like craving and so on. And if these symptoms are present, then we can talk about a disease. So if you have actual physical symptoms like you're shaking or you're sweating or something like that? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, experts have found, it's pretty new, that sugar can make you addicted just as alcohol can. Um, Does that really compare a sugar addiction? Does it compare to an alcohol addiction? Well, right now we don't regard um, the, the sweetness or the sugar, the sugar addiction as a disease, but we have to acknowledge that there are some patterns that are um, similar to those of, for example, addiction uh, on alcohol. So we have um, certain physiological reactions that are similar to those of alcohol, but right now we don't regard it, not yet, as a disease. Mm -hmm. Not yet, we'll see. Right. Um, would you say that some people are more susceptible to addiction or dependence than others? Well, it seems to be. Um, we think that uh, whether you are addicted or not is defined by your genes you are carrying and the environment um, that um, can um, make the decision whether you will fall ill with the, with the addiction or not. Mm -hmm. So you say genes and also your, your surroundings, basically. What's more important there, your genes or your behavior? This is hard to say. Um, probably it's um, balanced somehow, but we uh, think that you have certain genes, you are carrying certain genes, but whether or not these are activated is a question of the influence by environment. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me as if it's up to you, really, the way you behave, you can... You can influence it, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Well, what many, many, many of our viewers wanted to know is how do you break such a dependence? We've had uh, many people writing. Shaquille Hall from Jamaica, she eats too many sweets, she feels, she can't stop. What do you advise? How do you stop? The best advice is to, first of all, to get rid of all sweets in your environment, your, your apartment, um, working place, wherever you are, and to inform your family, your peer group, and uh, your working place about your problems so they might help you through and get rid of everything that can activate your addictive behavior. What about maybe trying to eat something else if you feel the urge to have sweets? Does that work? Yeah, if you, if you feel the urge to chew something, for example, you can um, choose something different, for example, vegetable, carrots or something that is more healthy and that makes the same movement like chewing some chocolate. Oil. And if you're not, you know, not keen on carrots, you could also go for a banana. That's something sweet right. there. Dr. Neu, would you have thought that, um, scientifically speaking, how effective is acupuncture in that regard? Well, statistically, we can't prove that this is a helpful therapy, but there are a lot of reports of people who tried it and find it helpful. So if you feel comfortable, um, comfortable with it, I can recommend to try. Mm -hmm. What about hypnotherapy? How, how effective is that? It's the same. We don't really know how it might work, but there are some reports of helpful um, experiences, and so you can try. Mm -hmm. So if there's no real scientific proof, does that help that you, know, you can just choose any method that suits you? No, not really. We have um, some methods that are statistically helpful and some, with, uh, some uh, which are reported often to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what's the most effective then? The most effective is the self-help group. That's the most um, 
experienced and statistically investigated um, uh, method and it will help you. So trying to stop with the help of others, communicating, right. weekly meetings, that sort of thing, yeah. right? Right. All right. What about nicotine substitutes um, like chewing gum, nicotine chewing gum? Can that help to ease withdrawal? This is helpful for a special period of the disease. So, for example, if you have um, very heavy withdrawal symptoms, then this might help. But it's not for your whole life of addiction. So in a special period, it's helpful, but not for all your life. Mm -hmm. All right. But the best thing is to get some support if you want to stop. Don't do it by yourself. Right. Self exactly. All right. Well, what about those people who, you know, don't want to become a smoker in the first place? We've had many people writing to us on that regard. Viewer Tusef Ashra from Pakistan has written in. He wants to stay a non-smoker, but all his friends smoke and induce him to start. What can you uh, advise him? How, how can he stay strong there? Yeah, I admit that it's very, very hard if your society, your environment is smoking and you as a single person wants to, you know, live another behavior. So I just recommend to him to be self-reliant and self-conscious and say you are on the right way. But I admit that it's a hard time for you. Well, and then again, in a few years when the others might feel or experience the signs of uh, smoking, yeah. maybe he'll... He's the pioneer. He yeah. has to be regarded Stay as a pioneer. Strong. Yes. Right. There are a few new things out there on the market. There is even a vaccine that's set to help uh, against uh, nicotine addiction. What's your experience there? We, we don't have any knowledge that this is a helpful therapy. So for the moment... I can't really recommend this and I don't think that it will be a therapy in the near future. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be your willpower that helps you to stop. Right. All right, then. Well, thank you very much for being our guest today. Thanks for your time. You're welcome.